This is podcast number 544. And today I'm going to be talking about seven challenges facing men in today's age. Now, this podcast is intended to shed light on the challenges that are facing men, not to say that women aren't facing challenges as well. And I think we all know very well, at least I would hope we all know very well some of the and many of the issues that are facing women today. And it's from my experience in coaching with men, men sometimes don't like to talk about it. They think they're the only ones who are feeling a certain way. And so they sit in quiet desperation, taking it out on their family, their friends, or not even talking or turning to drugs and, or abuse or TV or whatever that, that distraction might be, many men, have they don't feel they have a place to turn to express what's going on. And so this podcast is just to let the men who are listening know that I know what you're going through and that I coach a lot of men on these issues. Now, some of these issues obviously are not gender specific, so I do coach women, but this podcast today is specifically for men going, I know what you're going through, I got your back. You know, could we, we could say that we arguably live in a, a patriarchal and hierarchical society, and, and as a result, many people think that men can't suffer. I mean, you go to different cultures, and that's very much the dominant theme is, you know, men don't cry, men don't show their feelings, men don't show their emotions, men don't suffer, just suck it up and be a man, step up. All of this type of vernacular that we have all heard throughout different parts of our life that men aren't supposed to to do these things. And and after all, society which operates this way should be favorable to men, meaning a patriarchal one. It should be embracing men. And, and again, this is not to say that women aren't facing their own thing. So we'll put that aside and just, well, this is just a spotlight. It's not an ignorant, it's not ignoring some of the other challenges out there that women are facing. This is just a spotlight on what men are facing. But, you know, this isn't the case in this, in this society today about men feeling comfortable with, with going through whatever they're going through. And sadly, there are many occasions where men have def- been defeated by their own vulnerabilities, which often lead to a range of mental health problems or even worse, suicide. So, so let's review some of these issues facing men. These issues have been culminated from... Um, different psychology sites, me talking with my clients, my personal experience, and, and there's seven pretty big ones, and they're they're pretty encompassing. So there's not really the specifics on it, but men face obstacles which they struggle to get past. Meaning that it's a myth that men do not face obstacles. We all face obstacles, and even with the ever-present privilege, men face their own set of destructive barriers and obstacles that can restrict what it means to be a man and how a man can express himself. You know, as a man, when you grapple with overcoming obstacles, you are faced with the challenges that seem insurmountable to deal with. And these, these are, these are struggles just like, what do I do with my career? How do I support my family best? How do I, you know, all of these things that men have in, because of being the quote provider. And again, this is a patriarchal society, not that Women can't be the provider, but, you know, this is some of the things that men go through. They have these obstacles and they just can't get past it. They may not have a college degree that they'd like. So that's an obstacle to them. They don't know how to get past it. So they end up taking a job that pays a lot less only because they have this obstacle of, of a degree. Uh, you know, and and because of that, a lot of men lose motivation to go on. You know, a growing number of men seem to be losing their motivation for advancement at work. A lot of that is because of lack of purpose and lack of passion. They look at it as just paying bills. And when you look at something as just paying bills, it's it the motivation is going to be gone. You know, when I was in corporate, um, part of the thrill was making a career path, you know, going from a sales leader to a sales manager to a sales VP and, and those things. And, and to be quite honest, once those things didn't start to come to 
fruition, I lost kind of motivation for climbing up that ladder. So I just focused on my sales for a while and that was good. And then the motivation for that faded. So I can really talk to this one very specific. You know, this loss of drive holds men back more often than anything else. And it's just, again, not seeing the possibility of what's ahead of them, not having a purpose, not having a passion. It can be very difficult to maintain motivation over long periods of time. I mean, if you're looking at a career, you're looking at anywhere from 20 to 30 years doing something. And when you start out a career and it's already struggling with it, to project that out 20 and 30 years can be devastating. You know, motivation only lasts so long when we're focused solely on ourselves. But when you can think about how your mission will help others, you'll be able to tap into a fresh surge of motivation. So, again, this motivation is very much tied to purpose and passion. Those are two different things. You can, passion is what excites you. Purpose is why you're here. And I know that with work, a lot of people don't see the purpose in it. And when we take a bigger and what I help my clients look at is take a high level picture of what you do within a company and what that company does for the world or for the community. And once you know the importance of your role in that, then the motivation comes up. But again, this is really based on lack of purpose and lack of passion. Men live their lives stuck on autopilot. So often men can find themselves living on autopilot. This means that you're going through the, the motions of living without really feeling alive, living with very little intention on a daily basis, right? You wake up, you brush your teeth, you, whatever you do, you go to work, you do this, you come home, you sit in front of the TV and day, it's kind of like, Groundhog Day, right? A lot of men are feel like they're caught in Groundhog Day. And again, this gets back to this lack of passion and lack of purpose because they just go through the same thing. Well, I better not do something else because, um, you know, I might be able, might not be able to support my family. So this, this, this obstacle of not being able to support their family if they go someplace else keeps them stuck in a position that they just are on autopilot. And then they get on autopilot, they lose their motivation, and because they face this challenge of if I change my job, I'm not going to be able to support my family. And all of these these challenges I'm going through here are, are tied together very specifically. It's not one is independent of the other. But when we get done here, you're going to see that there is a common thread, and I've said it already, is this purpose and passion with it. But men are scared also of their own vulnerability. I mean, gosh darn, you know, when a boy begins to mature into a man, he has to pass a test. This kind of is a, a rite of passage, if you will, which in society today, at least Western society, we do not have this rite of passage. It is absolutely essential because, you know, they need to show this is, you know, when the boys during this rite of passage, they need to show courage, demonstrate physical proudness or mastery of a certain skill. Now, this is, this is, but it's all based on this macho type um, transition from boy to man. Essentially, you know, these, these older ones were, were to prove their competence as providers and protectors. And when these rites of passages were developed, men were primarily the procreators with the female, the providers and the protectors. And, and in this turn, this rite of passage conferred men to shape their own views of masculinity. Now, the rite of passage is still important, but it's how do we take a, a gentleman, or how do we take a guy and make him and have him go through that? Because many men have not gone through a rite of passage, a real rite of passage, they're just grown boys. And because of that, when you look at a boy, they're, they're, they're scared of their vulnerability that they don't want to show their feelings, that they want to be an artist instead of a lumberjack, that they want to do, right? So they're scared of that because of these, the old time rites of passage, the passings of the test, the agogi, right? In the 300, all of these things were meant to, you know, to, to make men macho and masculine. And yet when we are indoctrinated with that type of rite of passage, 
it says, don't be vulnerable, shut it down. And so men are scared to show that. And they don't, they hold back crying. They hold back sharing feelings. They hold back going, you hurt my feelings to the spouse. They just suck it up. But all that gets buried and that gets buried. It has to come out somewhere. And it comes out in excessive drinking, drugs, pornography, uh, whatever it might be. Because there's, there's a pain in there of not being able to share their vulnerability and it has to come out somewhere. So this is a very, very big one as well. You know, men are sitting on a dream also that seems so far out of reach. You know, when you first get the big idea, you're excited, right? You're motivated. Oh, I'm going to be the CEO. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to be the top salesperson, whatever it might be. And what happens is usually because of that, you have this dream about the type of life you, you plan to be living. Um, and then it could be something even small, like uh, maybe you're going to finally run the London Marathon or the Boston Marathon or write that great British novel or an American novel or spend a sum- summer in Spain. You have all of these great ideas, but all of a sudden these dreams become unachievable because of lack of passion with it and purpose with it. You have the dream, you start after it, and then you stop. You stop after it. And there's all these dreams that guys are sitting on going, I wish I could have. You know, when you get towards the end of, of, of our lives, we look back and I wish I could. That's why this buck, you know, a bucket list was developed at least for vacations. Before I die, I want to do this, 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 and this. And there's a great movie with Morgan Freeman on it called The Bucket List. But that is something that, you know, goes counter to what's happening now with a lot of men. They have dreams. They don't have a bucket list. They don't have a bucket list of things they want to accomplish in life. They don't have a bucket list of careers that they want to do. They don't have a bucket list of other things. But they're sitting on them. They know what they want. They're sitting on them, but they're pushing them down because they just seem so far out of reach. And so as, as they're out of reach, they kind of give up on them and they just lose part of their manhood by giving up on these things. You know, the the other thing here is men are constantly rejected and just going to pause again. Just want to make sure I understand that a lot of these things women face too, but I'm talking from a guy's coach, from a guy to guys, men are constantly rejected. Rejection itself is seemingly straightforward no and other parties kind of you know place this firm boundary around it no there'll be no second date no you will not get the job no i'm not going to hang out with you no 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 but these no's are far from the only times when men you know experience intense feelings of rejection they experience this rejection in other forms because there are so many expectations that men must fulfill and these expectations are projections from the men based on society, what they think they should do, right? And so when we start looking at all the rejection, you know, we want to buy a house, but we get rejected because of our finances. We want to go on vacation, but we get rejected because we don't have vacation time. We we want to take care of our, our send our kids to college, but we get rejected because of our lack of uh, financial abilities. So there are a lot of ways. I mean, I, I, and then if you're in sales, like I was, you face rejection so many times a day. But there's all of these different aspects of being rejected. And every day, every single day, men face three, five, seven pieces of rejection, whether it's from their boss, from their coworkers, from a client, from their, from their significant other, from their from their kids. There's this constant part of rejection. And if you're following this as men start to feel this, these rejections start to pile up, especially if they don't have a purpose, if they don't have a a passion. They just let these rejections pile up and tear them down. And then they sit on these dreams that they can't go after or don't want to go after because they don't want to be rejected. You know, also men face unrealistic expectations. Now, our society, at least here in Western society puts pressure on women to be slim and linked together in eating. You know, they have we have all of these these issues that we project on women. We, you know, the beauty magazines and all of that. And unfortunately, that negative impact the society ideas have on men often is overlooked. There's GQ 
mag magazines. There's the, the fitness magazines. There's, there's all these magazines about what it means to be, quote, a man physically, right? You have to look a certain way, dress a certain way, uh, behave a certain way. So these expectations of the same thing that women have been going through for many, 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 many years, um, you know, about the weight, about slim, about doing this and doing, you know, all of that is on men as well. And it doesn't make it right that we're both, both sexes are experiencing these unrealistic expectations, but we then have to take our power back and go in, who says, just because it's on a magazine doesn't mean it's true. Just because, you know, our expectations have to be our own. What do we expect of ourselves? I'm not saying that we have to become obese and overweight, or we have to be a millionaire, but we have to be what we enjoy being. And again, this gets back to purpose and passion. So here's the takeaway, right? You know, if we strive to address the disease, not just the symptom, we'll fix these challenges men are suffering with. You know, and really, men deserve a safe place to talk about their frustrations. And that's why I, I'm, I'm focusing more and more on men, helping men be men, helping them own their power, helping them but not be the chauvinistic, not be the 50s type guy, but be that. Uh, there was a great book I read a long time ago, A Man of Steel and Velvet, right? So you, you're just steel, you're solid inside, but velvet soft outside. And so this is where I'm helping men these days, you know, and I developed a new coaching program called The New World Warrior. There's also a Facebook group on that. It's a private group, but if you search out New World Warrior, you'll find it. Ask, you know, ask to join. I'll send you there. And we're, I'm going to start to do some webinars about this and do coaching. But I've developed a very specific coaching program just to help men be men, to help them face these challenges, to help them get their confidence back, to help them get into their masculine edge, to own their own life at work and at home and be the man they've always wanted to be. So if you want to find out more about this new group that I've done, go to warriormindcoach.com for more information. You can email me from there. Um, also, follow me while you're on the Internet on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest under Warrior Mind Coach. 